Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome to day 10 of Camp NaNoWriMo. I hope this video finds you well and that you've been writing. So today I'd like to talk about my strengths and weaknesses as a writer. And um, this was a little bit difficult to come up with because I can sit here and talk about my weaknesses as a person and as definitely as a writer all day, but to come up with strengths that um, I'd feel comfortable sharing and uh, that don't make me sound too braggy was was difficult to come up with and so I hope this video um, presents a balanced view of what I perceive to be um, my experience as a writer and I hope that it's um, inspiring for you to want to share your strengths and weaknesses down below and we can have a discussion about um, building on those strengths or um, you know, bettering your weaknesses. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the strengths. So one would be I am very empathetic and emotional, and most of the time overly so. Um, but I can step into a character's shoes and really experience what they are experiencing. Um, maybe I haven't been through that same exact situation before, but I've definitely experienced the emotions that they're going through and um, I can convey that in my writing, hopefully, um, eloquently, um, but even if I don't have the right words to say, I at least have a direction and um, an empathy and an understanding for human emotions. Another strength would be that I'm able to visualize the scenes for my novel. Um, I have a really hard time with memories and um, holding on to them. Like, I always forget the endings to movies and books. Um, but somehow these scenes have stuck with me, which is awesome. And I'm able to visualize it as if it's like a 3D scene that I can just kind of, you know, shift around and look at different perspectives. And it's kind of like a dream sequence almost that is very very vivid for me um, and so I feel like if I have the capacity to turn that idea into writing we're on a, the right track <laughs> um, and I also have an anthropological background I got my bachelor's degree in anthropology and that is the study of culture and humans and stuff like that and the evolution of all that stuff so um, I graduated two years ago and um, during that four years of college um, I was studying something that interested in me and um, cultures and humans are super fascinating and varied and it's also cool to see what's universal among humans and what's so completely different um, across time, across regions, and everything. So it's um, it's a lot of fun to try to bring that into my story. And my novel doesn't have a very grand scope in terms of a world. Um, there's only about three towns within like maybe 10 miles of each other. So it's, it's relatively small, but I want to give each town a really distinct feel. And... Um, create a culture for that town that represents the people that live there and also what my characters go through when they are in that town and their transformation and so I think that culture will be really fun to come up with and to implement in the story and um, kind of add different elements and um, so that's something that interests me and something that I think would come naturally and easy for me so it'd be fun too. Um, another strength would be that writing for me is very therapeutic. So um, when I'm getting that stream of consciousness um, stuff out there, it seems pretty dark at, and like a hot mess at the, at the time that it's being written. But um, it does deal with a lot of core issues and things that I feel inside of me. Um, and when I get that on, out on paper, it's it's scary to... To look at that and really see the implications of some of the stuff that I'm not even willing to face um, about myself. But if there is any possibility of me being able to really 
shape that and form that into something that I'd be able to present to someone else, I feel like that would be very healing for me to be able to um, open myself up, share um, the real me with somebody else. And I feel like if it helped me, it definitely would help other people too. So that's, um, that's one of the reasons why I write. Uh, we're almost done with the strengths, don't worry. So, um, the second to last one would be that I'm interested in the time period, um, that I'm writing my novel in. I love the Victorian era, love Charles Dickens, Jane Austen, watching BBC dramas, um, any period pieces, Pride and Prejudice, all that stuff. So, um, reading books from that time period and watching movies and just immersing myself in the fashion and the culture and the time period is amazing and awesome. So researching for this novel will be um, not a piece of cake but very fun and it won't seem like work which is uh, something I think that's uh, a valuable experience. Um, and yeah I think that I like this era so much because it seems like a simpler time, but also a much more grand time. Like everything was handmade and they took the time to make it beautiful, but things were also less complicated and um, I just, I feel like there was more of uh, family connections and introspection and um, just a lot more beauty. And I know that it's kind of silly to look back with rose-colored glasses on a, on a time period that you haven't lived in before, but um, I just know that it was better than the stuff that's happening right now. So that's why I kind of am in, more interested in historical fiction and writing historical fiction, because contemporary stuff does not interest me. Um, I don't like the world that we live in right now. So, yeah. And then my last strength would be, I think that I have the capacity to make memorable characters. Um, I intimately know them very well. They bug me. They um, they get on my nerves sometimes. They they um, you know speak to me. They are a part of me. Um, and they have their own strengths and weaknesses. They are flawed people that have terrible stuff happen to them. And I feel that that can be very relatable and hopefully memorable. And they're, they're definitely not going to be flat. And I've heard some book reviews saying that the, character, that the author didn't know their characters and that they fell flat. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't think that would be a problem for me. I think, if anything, it would be too character driven. Um, so those are my strengths. Yay! Now let's go for the weaknesses and bash all the things I just said. Okay, so um, one weakness would be that I feel like my plot, if you were just to take all of the different things that happened and smash them all together and say them one after another, um, it would kind of be like murder, rape, death, incest, um, horribleness, like suicide, awfulness. and that seems kind of unrealistic that all of these things have happened to like three people basically. Um, not very often do you get three people in a room that have all experienced that. Definitely not in this time period too. So um, even though this is fiction and I'm exploring a genre that I don't really know that much about I guess, um, I feel like it still might be unrealistic and I I don't know. That's uh, that's a weakness that I don't know. <laughs> um, and something that coincides with that, I feel like I might be cramming too many ideas into one story. Um, it almost feels like um, I'm approaching this, writing this novel as if this is the my one chance to get everything about myself and all of the things that I know to be true about life into one thing. that. I'm going to perfect and it's going to be like my soul and I give that soul to you and you read it and then you understand me. Um, and I know that's a really big expectation to uh, put on this, you know, tiny little physical thing. 
So I might be cramming too many ideas in there. I might be cramming too many hopes and probably will get disappointed in the end because who's really going to read it, you know? <laughs> oh, that's depressing. Um, anyways, um, another weakness would be that um, my story could really backfire in real life um, if I don't change a lot of things drastically because as I'm writing, I'm drawing on my own experiences and especially when I'm sprinting, I'm just doing kind of stream of consciousness, getting it out there and it's only when I look back on it that I realize how true it is for me when I think that I'm writing about these characters it actually is very reflective on my own life. Um, and for instance, I'm writing right now this um, chapter where Adley is running away to be with Dee, but she um, decides to write an anonymous letter to her father um, to let him know that she is dead instead of just disappeared. And she thinks that it will kind of let him down easier because, um, you know, then he won't feel so betrayed and everything. But it kind of backfires because what parent wants you know, their child dead over just estranged and never being able to speak to them again, but still alive somewhere in the world. So, um, Harland, her father, takes it really bad and, um, gets very, very blackout drunk and slits his wrist. And then Rowena, um, the mom, finds him and has to nurse him back to health, but she feels almost as if he should have died. And... That is a very um, reflective of my own family dynamics, and um, so I feel like if you were to, to read that scene and just switch the names of my parents, um, you would, you and they would be very upset because it would be um, like reading um, a slice of my own life, and so. My problem is that um, in the process of uh, being therapeutic and getting this stuff out and healing, I am drawing on personal experiences that really cut close to home. And if somebody were to um, figure out that, that those are real things that have happened to me, those are real experiences or people in my real life, um, it could come back to haunt me and bite me in the butt. Because nobody wants to be in somebody else's novel in a negative way, you know. Um, and that's not really the point. So maybe I should just deal with that in a different way. Um, Alright, we're almost done here. So another weakness would be that um, I don't know everything. Definitely not. But in some ways I'm trying to convey these noble truths um, about life and these um, very core elements that I feel to be true um, about myself and um, revealing some, you know, prolific thing. When I'm only 23, I'm going to turn 24 next month, um, and I don't know everything. So I feel like if I wrote this book and then some 100-year-old guy picked it up, he'd probably laugh at me. I mean... What does this chick think she's doing? I... yeah. Um, another thing would be that I am very lazy. And I don't just have a bad work ethic. I have no worth work ethic at all. Um, if it wasn't for NaNoWriMo or Camp NaNoWriMo, I wouldn't be writing. Um, I just wouldn't sit down and make myself write. Because I just... there's so many other things that I want to do. Um you know, that don't have any meaning. Um, so, yeah, it's very hard for me to find that drive and that discipline, um, really. So, that's kind of problematic. And then lastly, I don't know much about anything, <laughs> obviously. Um, I am a blank slate when it comes to uh, writing style and... Um, and the publishing world and everything, so I'm very open to new ideas and new ways of doing things, which can be a good thing. 
but I also don't have any experience, I don't have a lot of knowledge about how things work, and so um, it's going to take a lot of time for me to realize all of the steps that I need to take to um, really take this idea in my head um, and make it into a book. So that's going to be a very long process, and I'm, I'm just starting out. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's long again. I'm very sorry. Um, I just ramble, um, but I feel like I um, shared some things with you today. So I, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you uh, leave me some comments below. I'd love to read them. Alright, see you guys later. Bye!